this video, we're going to talk with my good friend John Abbott from Hog Holsters about some 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 things you may not have thought about about holsters and, and anything else that happens to come to mind. That's what's coming up next here on Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose, your home for information and gear reviews related to camping, survival, and general preparedness for regular folks. My name's Brian. Thanks for joining me. I'm here with my good friend John Abbott from Hog Holsters. You know that Hog Holsters is my holster. And by the way, this entire scene is lit by, uh, oh, right, we got light shining up here because it's kind of dim in here. So we want to try to give you the most professional quality video possible. So. As long as we're using <laughs> sponsored products. There you go. Awesome. Well, John, thanks. Thanks, uh, man. Thank you, as, as always. Thank you for coming. Um, and everybody knows that, that you are like one of my favorite people on earth. And, and, and so everything that I say about hog holsters is honest. But you know what? I'm just being straight up front with you. John's a good friend of mine. So you can take that with a grain of salt. But I carry a hog holster every day. And, and I do too. So there yeah. you go. So anyway, um, I, I was talking today. I was I was um I was over talking to Randall from Ulti Clip and I'm trying to talk about how we met. And I think Randall introduced us. Randall, uh, I, I called him up. I saw the Ulti Clip. I was extremely excited about a safe way that you could um, fasten your firearm, your holster, uh, to your to your trousers or whatever you're wearing. And then if something bad happened, it's really a good idea if you had to draw your firearm from a concealed carry position for an emergency. Um, that you could actually take the holster off, put the firearm back in it to reholster safely because yeah. you're going to be pretty nervous if that happens. And uh, when I saw the Ulti clip, I don't remember what magazine I saw it in. I immediately ordered some of them. And uh, I, I ordered the Ulti clip right away and uh, called them up and said, hey, I'm interested in perhaps, you know, got a couple of them in, tried them out, loved what I saw. Ulti clip is a great product. Uh, and uh, every holster, hog holster, uh, inside the waistband ships with a the uh, three plus ulti clip. Um, you can upgrade it with an XL, but uh, the thing of it is, is you can take them off really easy. You can put them on. They're the most versatile fastening system that I've ever seen in, in the holster industry. And uh, when I saw that, I I, I knew that that was going to be a good partnership. So I talked to him, and he said, "Hey, you're making holsters." You might want to call this guy and send him a holster, survival on purpose, you know, give him a chance to see it on a holster actually applied. So I designed a holster around the Ulti clip um, as the nucleus of, of I wanted it to be, uh, you know, made around the Ulti clip design. So that's what it did. And uh, I sent you one. And um, and it's one of the one of the best, you know, decisions, not only personal, being friends later on. Um, but but send it to you. I didn't know you. You might throw it in the trash and say whatever. But I think I make a good product, and I, I and I appreciate how you feel about my product. So what you didn't know was at that time, I had been in the process of a couple of years of trying to find a holster I like. So I mean, I've been to gun shows and bought holsters, and I bought like this some kind of holster that was supposed to be universal, fit anything, and I literally could not get. The, it, it had a, a spring clip, just a regular spring clip on it, mm -hmm. but. It was so, I don't know, once you got it on, I couldn't hardly get it off. I mean, it was like, and so I was trying like leather holsters. Most of them had just the kind of clip that you spring over and it holds on your belt. And, and they hold okay, but they just didn't seem to like, you could pull them off. And I don't know, when I saw yours, I'd never seen an ulti clip before. And what, what I really liked about it was the fact that it clips to your pants, not your belt. So even if you're not wearing a belt, you can't wear the, you know, you got really good retention. I believe in wearing a belt because you need to, just for the support. But even if you don't wear a belt, you know, if you, for whatever reason, you know, you're, you're, not, you're not wearing, a, you're wearing a sweatsuit or whatever. Like sometimes when I go to the gym, um, if I have to stop, go in somewhere after the gym and I'm wearing gym clothes, I'll just stick it on the clip and, and go, you know. Absolutely. Well, for instance, my wife wears a Glock 43 with yoga pants um, with it uh, when she walks the dog, you know, sometimes. Um, where, where we live, we have coyotes that'll stand 20. 20 yards away from you and look at you like no big deal yeah. uh and they've lost their fear of humans well i i'm not i'm not stupid you know when i go outside with my dog in the middle of the night i've got on a pair of gym shorts and a shirt and a hog holster with the glock 43 in it or a glock 19 whatever i feel like yeah. and uh the, the thing of it is is i carry a firearm if you see me and i've got clothes on unless it's purely restricted by law i've got a firearm on me yeah um, but uh, the thing of it is with the Ulti Clip, 
and the hog holsters the way I designed it. A lot of a lot of times there are more util, utilization than what perhaps gets pointed out by a holster. Um, one thing is like the, the gazenta where we clip it to that and put it in the seat belt, you know. Um, but the other thing is a lot of people don't realize is like for instance if you're carrying in a situation where you can't carry or you you want an extra gun. I believe in having more than one gun. I mean it's a faster reload to be honest with you. Um, one thing that I do is here's my uh, my expedition bag. If you look right here, there's a pocket. They can see this or not. Very yeah, simply, by the way, just for safety, so nobody, none of, of y'all give him a bunch of bunch of bull. Uh, we'll just go ahead and show that the firearm is empty. And uh, there you go. So in the holster, and let's just say I open up the ulti clip, and I can clip it to a pocket inside my backpack. I zip it closed. If I need it in a hurry, the gun's there. Uh, very simply, it holds on. If it's a quarter inch thick or thinner, the ulti clip will hold on to it. You know, uh, that's one thing about the ulti clip. They do a great job, and that's why I utilize them with adjustable cant on the hog holster. Um, did you have some other questions about about the, the, the holster? So you've got. Um, and these aren't questions, these are just in case you haven't seen this. If you haven't seen any hog holsters, you haven't been watching the channel for very long, but you, this is the Ulti Clip 3, right? This, this, is, the, like, this is the Ulti Clip 3 Plus. It's uh, They put a little bit of rigidity into the sides okay, of it. It's folded over a little bit. Yeah, it's yeah. folded over a little bit on the sides. Corrugated rigid, rigidity uh, for structural purposes. Um, if they get a little squeaky, always use a little chapstick on them. Won't stain your clothing. If they make a lot of noise, put a little chapstick on there. And so for people, that if, if you haven't seen this, what it is, it's like a little toggle here. This is spring steel. This stuff is not going to, I mean, it is strong. If you, if you think you need to reshape it or whatever, you're not going to be able to. You know, it's just, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's where it needs to be. But then it's just got a little, a little 90 degree bend here. And when you clamp it down, it just pushes this down and it catches whatever it's clamped to really, really tight. And it's curled under. So even if it, if it, if it, if it's like really slick material, sometimes it will slide just a little bit, but it's going to catch when, when it starts sliding. I've not had ever had one of these pull off of anything. So it's just even yeah. a pair of blue jeans, a pair no, of, they, they won't pull off. There's one place that they get a little bit kind of sort of, if you're wearing Levi's, which is an anti-gun company. Yeah. But if you're wearing Levi's where that tag is on the back, that tells everybody how fat you are. Um, if you put it on that clip, that's slick enough that sometimes it might pull off. Well, that's the only wearing, place I've seen it. I ain't worn Levi's in a long time, but I found that out from yeah. a customer one day. I quit wearing them when they quit supporting the Boy Scouts. So there you go. Let me show you something else about the the hog holsters and the way I design them. Um, long time ago, when I was shooting IDPA, uh, a, a different holster company, don't even know who it is, don't remember. But uh, my front sight caught on the sight channel, so I've always built a tall sight channel to handle most sights in the firearm, and even on the back. I build it where it will handle a night sight. You can see that that area there. I don't know how well that shows up in, in the video, but it comes all the way up here on both sides. Some people say, hey, it's sweat guard. Well, you're not going to be sweating on the other side. The reason I put that on there is I've carried a concealed firearm quite a bit of my life, uh, at least since it's been legal to do so. And one thing I notice is when you're carrying a firearm and if you're clumsy, some people are, we bump into things. Well, if you bump into something, it's really important to me that your rear sight not be moved because if your rear side is moved you could aim at the good at the bad guy or target and completely miss and uh, i like keeping your sights where, I, where right where you've got them set so that's why i build that up there higher to cover up your rear sights on both sides and i've told you this before and i've said it on video before there's something about your holsters that is indefinable that makes them the most comfortable holster i've ever worn and and I can't really put when you you can't tell by looking. I mean, it looks, I, they're obviously well made, but there's 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 nothing fancy about them. There's nothing complicated. There's a piece of kydex, right? Molded. They're, they're like me. They're simple, and I try to keep them simple for the end user. You know, I have some people say, well, you know, the the uh, the retention is not adjustable. Well, after teaching concealed carry for years and years, people would show up sometime with an adjustable holster, and they'd say, hey, can you help me set the retention on my holster? And I'd I'd help them, you know, and they'd say. I said, how long you had this holster? And they said, well, we've been carrying it for a while, you know, practicing with it for a while or whatever, but we can't quite get the retention, you know, squared away. And I'd help them and I'd show them how you figure it out with different holster manufacturers. And I realized that doing it year in and year out, that most people wanted it pretty much in the same area of retention. They wanted it where when they grabbed the holster, 
when they grab the firearm and they make a deliberate grab of that firearm, they grab onto that gun like they mean it, like somebody's getting ready to get hurt if they don't pull it, them, mean them or their family, and they pull it, it comes right out. But if you go pull it, it feels a little tough. I don't want your firearm to come out unless you deliberate, take a deliberate action and pull it. So I set the retention at the factory and then I make it permanent. And yes, it can be adjusted with a heat gun or whatever. If you, if you, if you know what you're doing, or if you call me up and say, Hey, I need to loosen a little bit. I'll say, Hey, get a hairdryer. And we'll do this together over the phone. I try to, you know, one thing my company has for a lot of people say is if they call, they're not pressing one for English, two for some other language. They're getting either an answer machine because I'm busy um, working on machines and can't hear them or they're getting me. And that's it, right? you know, and, uh, and I like talking to my customers. Now I don't like talking to them all day long because I got work to do, but you know what? I'll do whatever it takes to help them. And, right. uh, and the thing of it is, is, is they don't lose the hardware. If you lose a screw from a hog holster, all you do is send me an email with a phone number and address, say, Hey, I lost a screw. Tell you what, I mail it to you. I've had to do that exactly twice in eight years. I'll tell you, as far as retention goes, I, I carried a hog holster, um, the tactical response fighting pistol to two day class, and we were rolling around on the dirt. It wasn't, it wasn't standing around shooting holes in pit. And we were rolling around on the dirt, crawling around, running, gunning, just more than I'd ever done before. Zero, zero problems with, I mean, it was like perfect. So, so I, I build them to worked. hold on to the guns until you're holding on to the firearm. When you need to pull it, I want it to come out, but I don't want it to come out. If you sit down in a coffee shop, you know, and you bang your gun against the table. I don't want it coming out. I don't want it coming out until you need it to come out. I don't want it to come out if your little three-year-old grabs a hold of it. Right. I want it to come out when you have a deliberate pull on the hand grip on the firearm and you've made the decision that drawing it in a life-saving situation that's when I want it to come out. Yeah. And I want it to come out quick. I want you to be ready with it. But until then, I want it safe in a hog holster. <laughs> That's a good, you know, and by the way, I know this sounds like a hog holster commercial. It is. But, but, but it, <laughs> you know, but, but from my standpoint, I just really, truly want to share and, and, and this opportunity. We actually did this about a year ago and the lighting was so bad. It just, it was a horrible video. So, but you got, brought the old light. We've got old lights now. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing this on my phone. And so it's probably not the uh, most concise or short video, but but John's just a good guy. And I thought, you know what? Instead of me trying to tell you about about his his stuff, let's 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 get him on camera and, and just kind of give us some some of that the philosophy that went behind it. Because I um I remember you called me one time, gosh, this is right after we met, and you were coming to Georgia to get a um you got like a mobile you make these things like in a you at gun shows you can make them custom. You got a mobile shop that you can pull around. I right? did do that. I sure did. Um, it, it was a God thing, um, to be honest with you. I uh, used to go to gun shows. I only had, I remember when I only had like eight or nine blue guns and um, eight or nine molds. And I borrowed a, a Smith & Wesson shield from a friend of mine to make some bunch of Smith & Wesson shield, nine millimeter holsters. And um, I kept kept working at it, you know, putting them back into business. And I decided that what I was going to do was build a mobile trailer. And uh, I had a really good friend of mine, Bart Carson, did the, did the interior carpentry work. And uh, it's a really good workshop. But uh, it has been permanently parked at a super secret location where the factory <laughs> is. And I go there every day, five, six days a week, and I make holsters. And uh, get up sometime in the summertime out in Arizona at 5 o'clock in the morning. Because by noon, it's going to be 112 degrees, and it's got a really good air conditioner on top of that mobile trailer now. And if y'all send me an email, I'll send you a super secret picture, but without the location. <laughs> and, uh, and I make holsters in there, and then I take them, and I, I take them back over to my house and, uh, and go in the office and uh, put the hardware on them and, you know, wipe all the dust off of them and stick them in a bag and, and send them out and uh, every day. I can't tell you. I've, I mean, literally, I've got every just I, constantly. I'm getting these co comments on videos from somebody says, "Hey, I took your advice. I ordered a holster from John. It got here like you know, whatever, it's, uh, whatever, blah blah." It's just amazing. You people are so so. I guess it's just refreshing in today's climate. Or like you said, you, every time you call somebody, you got to go through a, a 14 chapter phone tree of, 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 of I, automated voices and, and this and that and and just a 
to, to somebody that really does just say, you know what, we do things the old-fashioned way. Well, the thing of it is, is number one, now instead of eight guns, blue guns, um, I make over 208 different holsters. Uh, and a lot of them, 99% uh, of them are made to order. Um, you order it on a Monday pretty much by 10 a.m. Uh, Arizona time, and it's going to be in the mail on Tuesday if it's not in the mail on Monday. However, I say three days, four days, because I, you never know what could happen. You know, power could go out. If power goes out too long, I'll hook up a generator. Um, I, I, I like getting... Uh, I like my customers to order something for me and get it faster than they expect it. You know, under promise, over deliver. There you go. So we're probably way over time here. We may have to, we have to maybe, I got some other topics I want to talk about, but there'll be a different video. That way we'll give you a little teaser here. So. All right. Um, okay. So, John, thanks for um, just taking a minute to no show, Thank us, you. show us the um, kind of behind the scenes of your thought processes. There'll be a link in the description below where you can get your own hog holster and you can save 10% by using the coupon code SURVIVAL ON PURPOSE. All caps, I think, right? It all like caps. It. Hey, let me tell you something about the code. When you type it in, it's all one word. SURVIVAL ON PURPOSE. All one word, no spaces, no dashes, no underscore. One word, SURVIVAL ON PURPOSE. And the thing of it is, if you forget, you can call me. Um, if you got a problem with it, you can call me. But please type it in when you purchase it because when I if, if you call me for a refund, it's a problem because it shows your whole order has gotten refunded on the web on the internet and it causes all kinds of trouble. So please type it in first. There you go. So um my name is Brian. You're watching Survival on Purpose. Survival's not an accident. So be prepared. I'll see you next time.